Our Prabhu is just outside the no. door there.
मिक्सचर ऑफ कर्म मिक्सचर ऑफ ध्यान मिक्सचर ऑफ जो तो तो लाइक ए वाटर और ब्रिंग ड्रिंक इन वाटर देन देर इज ओशन ऑफ वाटर यू कैन नॉट ब्रिंग दिस इज अल्टरेशन ऑफ शॉर्ट सो मच यू कैन नॉट ड्रिंक और इन ड्रेंस सो मच वाटर गोइंग ऑन बट यू कैन नॉट ड्रिंक In this way, in bhakti there are so many mixture of bhakti. Really, they are not. But in world, in this world, now it is especially in kali yoga. All the mixture of the bhakti is there. In the name of pure bhakti, like Rup Shila Rup Goswami has told. Or all acharyas have told like this that there are three kinds of bhakti. One pure bhakti, sarupshiddha bhakti. Then sangshiddha bhakti. And then arupshiddha bhakti. Arup Siddha Bhakti and Sang Siddha Bhakti are actually not Siddha Pure Bhakti. You should define what is Arup Siddha and what is Sang Siddha. Sri Rupa Goswami has, by his closest mercy, defined three types of bhakti. So, Srila Gurudev described, Swarup Siddha Bhakti is real bhakti, but there are two other things that are known as Arup Siddha and Sangha Siddha. If you want to know what is Arup Siddha and Sangha Siddha Bhakti, first of all, we'll have to understand what is Swarup Siddha Bhakti. Then, Arup Siddha and Sangha Siddha, they can easily be understood. So, Swarup Siddha Bhakti means that activity which itself is entirely composed of the activities of pure bhakti. This is of nine types. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smarnam, Padasevanam, Achanam, Vandanam, Dasam, Sakyam, Atmani, Vedanam. Mm -hmm. Or it may be of five types. Sadhu Sangha, Nama, Kirtan, Bhagavat, Sravan, Mathura, Vasa, Sri Murtira, Shraddhaya, Sevan. Associating with the pure devotee, hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, doing Nam Sankirtan, living in a holy place, and serving the deity. With her red eyes. I want that all food be straight. And then carefully. Otherwise, Maya will come. And Maya will sit on your eyes. <laughs> you making your eyes ready. <laughs> and some, maybe you want to carry And then you <laughs> oh, you have. Coming from so distant places, I am coming from India. So, so don't waste time. May a minute time in sleeping or doing <laughs> So, Swarup Siddha Bhakti means nine types or five types or two types Shavan Kirtan, like this. The activities which, in and of themselves, are wholly and solely composed of uh, devotional service. Then we come to Arop Siddha Bhakti. The word Arop means to attribute. In other words, the activity itself is not composed of bhakti, but because the devotee is performing this activity with the intention of pleasing Krishna, therefore he is attributing the quality of bhakti to that activity. For example, in the nine processes of bhakti, we will not find farming there. Though someone may be farming and taking the fruits and offering them to the deity, but farming itself is actually not bhakti. So because they're taking the fruits and vegetables and offering them to Krishna, it may be called Arup Siddha Bhakti. It is a general activity, but it has been attributed the quality of bhakti because of the intention of the devotee. Also you can understand by the example of Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva Maharaj was remembering the mantra of Vasudeva Krishna. 
and he was uh, in astorities, in thrones. He gave up water, any grain flow, even air, and he stopped his breathing and remembering by his heart, Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudeva. Oh, this is, this mantra is of Bhagavat, um, uh, regarding Krishna. But, who is Vasudeva Krishna? Himself Krishna. He wanted to please Krishna, but for what? For pleasing Krishna or for his self gain? For his self gain. For self gain. For his sense gratification, that he will have a very big king and kingdom, and he will test. Though he was pleasing Krishna by his mantra, but the mood and the goal was something else. So this is not pure bhakti. This is arup siddha bhakti. No connection. Like we are making a score. Anywhere in 64 kinds of bhakti, there is no mention of Gurukul, how setting anything, or making a garden for. This is all like Arushita. But if they can have some link, that fruits of the garden will be given to Krishna. Or the boys will learn something etiquette and they will chant to remember Krishna and in future they will be devotees. So there is chance something. So these are all Arokshita, not Dhamma. No Kirtan, Smaran and all of that. So these are all Arup Siddha. Then Sanu Siddha. Guru Maharaj is a Bhakti Arup Siddha or a Satam Bhakti? Because he is doing Both that. Both Satam Bhakti is divided in all these things. Same thing. What name is different. What? When he is doing Vishnu Smarana, and this is one of the nine. Not a Smarana Vishnu. But chanting the mantra only for Krishna. For Vasudeva Krishna. No doubt. <coughs> His mood was different. Shakam Bhakti. Shakam Bhakti is divided into so many. Then, so this Arabsiddha Bhakti is, it is prone for the conditioned souls in this world to mistake this for pure Bhakti. And as a result of this, they do this practice for a long time. But they find that realization does not come because it is actually not Shuddha Bhakti. Then we go to Sangha Siddha Bhakti. This is another uh, type of practice which appears to be Bhakti but is actually not Bhakti. In Shastra it is written that a devotee has 26 qualities, like that he's brave, that he's poetic, that he's silent, that he's the best friend of all living entities, that he's always humble, and these are the qualities of a Vaishnava. So a devotee thinks that Oh, if I am cultivating these qualities, then it will be bhakti. Mm -hmm. But these are actually not bhakti. These are considered to be like the paribha, or the family members of bhakti. One who has devotional service automatically has all of these qualities. But if independently of Swarup Siddha Bhakti, one is trying to cultivate these qualities, this activity in and of itself is actually not bhakti. And it will not bring realization of Krishna. So these three things are there. Swarup Siddha Bhakti, Arup Siddha Bhakti, and Sangha Siddha Bhakti. And the Acharyas have defined these things so that we can be very careful and come into the line of Swarup Siddha Bhakti. Because by practicing Swarup Siddha Bhakti, then three results automatically come. One's faith and love begin to grow. One has some realization of Krishna himself. And one becomes thoroughly detached from all material existence. Whereas by practicing Arup Siddha and Sangha Siddha Bhakti, these results will not come, and one will gradually, gradually lose faith if he does not have proper association to again bring him into the line of Swarup Siddha Bhakti. Now I am coming on the subject. 
that Pai Chaitanya Mahaprabhu descended to this world. Krishna Dasta Vidyanti Goswami is explained. First he told that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to establish Yudhav. Then he told that he came to establish Nam Sankirtan. And this is Yudhav. After that he told that Anarpita Charing Chira to sprinkle his mercy, to be all these jivas. The same thing which was not given oh, for a long time. And that was a spontaneous love. Rad Marga Prachara. Rad Marga Bhakti Lokai to give some way how we can have a spontaneous braja pray. He went to do. So now he is telling that his main cause to descend this world was to uh, taste the highest mood of the material. What was that? For this, he is quoting a slope of Sarup Mahabharata. Radhaya Prane Mahima Kirtisha Va Ane Vasvat Dojena Dhut Madhuri Ma Kirtisho Va Madhiya Sokhan Chasya Madhan Bhavata Kirtisha Muvetti Lobhav Tad Bhavadam Samjani Chachi Garva Sindhu. Read the translation. Desiring to understand the glory of Radharani's love, the wonderful qualities in him that she alone relishes through her love, and the happiness she feels when she realizes the sweetness of his love, the Supreme Lord Hari, richly endowed with her emotions, appears from the womb of Srimati Shati Devi as the moon appears from the ocean. He is telling that Esap Siddhan Tabur Kahite Najuai Na Kahile Kehu Ihar Antanahita. He is telling that I want to explain the reason why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. What I have told before, there are not main reasons. Preach Nam Sankirtan to establish Nam Sankirtan. This is the job of Mahavishnu that was Advaita Acharya. He could have established it. But he cannot preach that Braja Prem, the way of Braja Prem, that Raga Nuga Marga. He cannot. What is Raga Nuga Marga? Path of a spontaneous love. He cannot give. He can give up to that uh, established Yuga Dharma. So, he prayed to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I cannot give this. Please descend. Here Chait Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is telling you. Before this he has told that pray marash nidyas karite aswadam arat marg bhakti loke karite pracharam rasik sekhar krishna paramakuran karun ehi di uthetu hache ichha lagam. 15, 4, 15. <coughs> <laughs> the Lord's desire to appear was born from two reasons. He wanted to taste the sweet essence of the mellows of love of God, and he wanted to propagate devotional service in the world on the platform of spontaneous attraction. Thus he is known as supremely jubilant, 
Rasika Shekhar, and the most merciful of all, Paramakarum. He has also told that Prem Nam Pracharite Ei Avatar, Shatta Ei Hetu Kintu Taha Bahiranga. Fifth and six. I, I have given the essential meaning of the fourth verse. This incarnation descends to propagate the chanting of the holy name and spread love of God. Although this is true, this is but the external reason for the Lord's incarnation. Please hear one other reason, the confidential reason for the Lord's appearance. So here he is telling that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, established Nam Sankirtan everywhere. And he also uh, reached the way of continuous devotion of Vrajapur. But also these are external. Then what is main thing? Main cause? Then he is telling here. Of all these established tools, Siddhanga are so secret that we should not discuss in general meetings. Very rare, very rare. But he is telling also that if it will not be given to qualified devotees, then it will go away from this world. What means? Yes, sir. Uh, Srila is describing that Krishna's Kavraj Goswami, he is in a dilemma. What is that dilemma? On the one hand, these things are so secret and so confidential that they should not be disclosed. They should not be spoken in public. Yet, on the other hand, if these things are not spoken, then they will disappear from the world entirely. So, I know that this, all Siddhans are very rare, very confidential. confidential. But why I am telling to you the same thing in the line of Krishna Dashtabhya? Yet I am not telling all these things to you because you are senior devotees, I know, and he, you, you are hearing, hearing from so many years and years. In this council, there are so many devotees that who are in Iskong for 25 years or so many years. So, I want that this should not go on from this world. If there are some rare devotees even, they should know all these explanations. Why Krishna Das Goswami is explaining now? Ateo kahi kuch kariyani gul, bujive rashi ke janna bujive mood. Meaning? 232. <coughs> all these conclusions are unfit to disclose in public, but if they are not disclosed, no one will understand them. Therefore, I shall mention them, revealing only their essence, so that loving devotees will understand them, but fools will not. Anyone who is captured, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda Prabhu in his heart will become blissful by hearing all these transcendental conclusions. All these conclusions are just like the newly grown twigs of a mango tree. They are always pleasing to the devotees who in this way resemble cuckoo birds. The camel-like non-devotees cannot enter into these topics. Therefore, there is a special jubilation in my heart. Four lines, four. For fear of them, the camel-like non-devotees, 
I do not wish to speak. But if they do not understand, then what can be happier in all the three worlds? Therefore, after offering obeisances to the devotees for their satisfaction, I shall speak without hesitating. That was a forest. In that forest, there are several, several mango trees and also some neem trees. You know, naturally, cuckoo bird will see on mango tree and they will test mango, the manjaris of mango. And that is why this is seen very sweet. And other hand, if there are so many no, mangoes. mangoes, very sweet, and they are right, written, very tasteful, sweet, fragrant. Even crows will connect seed on mangoes. They will seed on neem tree. Naturally. And they will take bitter taste of neem and they will oh come on, come on, come on. <laughs> If cuckoo birds will call them that a you should come and test like me, they will never come, never come. You know camels. What is the habit of camels? They always be in desert lands. No, eh? no mango trees or anything. Only thorns are there. They will not test anything else. Oh, only thorns. And thorns will make some something, and their own blood will come, and they will test their own. Blood. Oh, how interesting! <laughs> so they are like the rest. They will not take it. So he is telling that I am now so happy. My doubts had. I was saying that they will hear and then they will take some other meanings and they will make mixture. But now I am happy. They will reject this nectar. They will never, they will come and buy court. That he is Sahajiya. He is not all in line. Huh? He is very well. Like this he will take. And they will never hear all these things. <coughs> but the great devotees who are in good association, initiated by a very high class of devotees, always hearing all these things, Chaitanya Chaitanya, in the real process. Really they will have some greed for hearing all this. How we can develop it for Krishna, Krishna concepts? So they will hear it very passionately. Mm -hmm. So he now, out of doubt, oh, I should tell it, because those who are like camel and crow, they will not come and hear. They will buy, buy God. So I will fear and inform them, and if they are not listening, they are boycotting, then what harm I should tell them? Otherwise, this idea will go away from this world forever. So I must tell them. You know that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Rupa Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami has written so many things for you. This is our goal. So we must know our goal and then According to our qualification, we should select our process or path. <coughs> so Krishna Das Goswami is telling. So I also never have any doubt. I know that those who are some qualified, some greed for Krishna consciousness, real bhakti, they will hear. And other will hear and reject. So no Otherwise, from world, this path will go away forever. Krishna Das Kapirat Goswami has made, you know, uh, Krishna Bhavana Amrita. 
Srila Vishwanatha Kumati has uh, Govinda Lilamrita. Hmm? These are our goal. But there is she there. Only for rare qualified devotees. Srila hmm, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he has followed all these things. He has told all the ways. Raganuga, Marga, everything, what Rupa Goswami and others have explained. He has given all in Jai Anyone can tell, anyone was telling to me that Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Goswami Thakur, never he has explained these things. But they don't know. They are like ignorant. He has published Jai Dharma about in 20 editions from beginning to end. My Guru Dev, he was very strict, strict about this. But he had published Jaiva Dharma. What is Jaiva Dharma? In Jaiva Dharma, everything has. So they have told like this, they have idea. You know that Bhakti Vinod Thakur was Kamal Manjari. You know that Srila Prabhupada was in Ain Manjari. My Gurudev was Vinod Manjari. If they are not following this line, then how they have this name? <coughs> Bhakti Vinod Thakur has told his name himself. Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Goswami Thakur. Who gave this name? Of self realization it came and all accepted this. Or Guru Maharaj had told his whole own name with his own mouth. So if they are not following that line of <coughs> process, Siddha Pranali, that Bhakti Vinod Thakur has told, it has been told by Srila Rupa Goswami. And how it can be So this is our target, our goal. But we should try to follow this from beginning, not from top. This is the thing. That is why for the Ganas, they have not told that you should uh, follow these things. Ashtakali Leela or Siddha Swaru or uh, all Ekadash modes, eleven modes. But if anyone has so much greed and they are falling, oh, they are so lucky. They are not out of line. So here he is telling. Ihabai Atae Bhaktakane Kari Namaskar Niyasanke Kahe Tarho Chamatkar. Therefore, after offering obeisances to the devotees, for the satisfaction of the devotees, I shall speak without hesitating. Yes, so note that the <coughs> translation of Chaitanya Chaitamit is made by himself, Swami Maharaj, Prabhupada. No? He has written himself. He is reading from Chaitanya Chaitamit. Now he is telling. Explaining something more. Krishna Vichar Ek Ache Antare Purnananda Rasasarup Shabakahe More. Once Lord Krishna considered within his heart, everyone says that I am complete bliss, full of all rasas. What are you telling? All Gita Rasho Vaishaha. That Krishna is Oshana for us. But in the meantime, same time, he is a portion of a rush and he is Ashi, also Rashik Shekhar, tester of that Russia. Wow. So he is a Rashi, a Russia Swaru, and, and third, he is giver of all these Russias. <coughs> Three things. So, he, Krishna is thinking himself, that I am ocean of her Russia. Also, it has been told 
अहो भाग्यम अहो भाग्यम नंद गोप्त जौक्षम जनमित्रम परमानंदम पूर्ण ब्रह्मा सनातन आल्सो इन भक्ति ले शामिल सिंधु he has this kind of all krishna is ocean of us and in the same time he is the rashik rashik means the tester of all rashas hmm? ama hoyte anandit hoy tribhuvan amake anand dibe aiche kauna jan krishna continued all the world derives pleasure from me is there anyone who can give me pleasure because he is supreme personality of god also eh he is mane koi bhi cheez unse bacha hua nahi hai there is nothing jo nahi jante anything is not unknown to him unknown to him unknown to him all the rasa everything he knows but in the same time there are two things krishna is one ras and all ras what is ek ras ek ras and anek ras krishna is one ras what is the meaning krishna is himself rasaswaru and he knows everything there is nothing that he does not know everything so he is called in vandaras that is uh, he he is knower of all the rasa uh, that is what word oh <coughs> आत्माराम एंड आत्मकाम ही इज आत्माराम एंड ही इज आत्मकाम बट इन अदर हैंड ही इज ऑल्सो अनेक रस देर इज समथिंग इन राधिका एंड ऑल द गोपीज दैट कृष्ण हैज नॉट दैट थिंग so krishna wants to test all these things atmavataras parvataras he knows i am rasaswaru and he is object of of the ras he has idea he has some test that how he can test basala ras dasya ras singar ras madhura ras everything but he is object of love he is not a self <coughs> something that he wants to mix both what is in jashoda maiya and nanda baba in friends and also what is the mood of simati radhika and all the gopis he wants to test it so this is he tested it in the form of only chaitanya mahaprabhu there is something that krishna does not know what is that that ruha bhav rud bhav means mahabhav of radhika he does not know this the mood of radhika he will explain further so there is something that krishna does not know what he does not know now he is expression and for that he came in the shape of chaitanya mahaprabhu having the golden complexion, complexion of radhika and internal mood of shrimati radhika now he is there जगते असंभव एकली राधाते राधाते अनुभव। 
One more qualified than me is impossible to find in the world. But in Radha, alone I feel the presence of one who can give me pleasure. In Veda and especially in Vedanta and Srimad Bhagavatam, it has been accepted that there is no one greater than Krishna. Ashamodhatatva, Ashama Uddha. Any word? Krishna is unequaled and unsurpassed. He is unequaled. <coughs> but Krishna is telling himself that in full world none are qualified like me. But only I know that only Srimati Radhika is more qualified than me. And how he is telling again. Koti kam ji ni roop jaddapi amar asamurdh madhur je samme nahi jar moru pe apai to kare trakhuan radha darsane moru jivare. Although my beauty defeats the beauty of ten million cupids, although it is unequaled and unsurpassed, and although it gives pleasure to the three worlds, seeing Shumati Radharani, gives pleasure to my eyes. The vibration of my transcendental flute attracts the three worlds, but my ears are enchanted by the sweet words of Srimati Radhika. Although my body lends fragrance to the entire creation, the scent of Radharani's limbs captivates my mind and heart. Although the entire creation is full of different tastes because of me, I am charmed by the nectarian taste of the lips of Shrimati Radharani. And although my touch is cooler than ten million moons, I am refreshed by the touch of Shrimati Radhika. Thus, although I am the source for the happiness of the entire world, the beauty and the attributes of Sri Radhika are my life and soul. In this way, my affectionate feelings for Shrimati Radharani may be understood, but on analysis, I find them to be contradictory. But now he is thinking again. <laughs> what I have told that Radhika hmm, is Guru of Krishna Prem. So come to eleven. Huh. Okay. Krishna accepted this. What? The gopis are the helpers, teachers, friends, wives, dear disciples, confidants, and serving maids of Lord Krishna. Sahaya Guru Vasishya, Buddhishya Vandavastya. Satyam Vadami Te Parata Gopya Kim Me Bhavantina. This is a verse from Gopi Premamrita. O Parta, I speak to you the truth. The Gopis are my helpers, my teachers, disciples, servants, friends, and consorts. I do not know what they are not to me. So he is telling that I have read this frame, love and affection, in the school of and they are my also teachers of love and affection. They have accepted himself. So now he is telling that one thing is that there is something in me. What is the that thing in me? That Radhika becomes uh, unmatta, like mad by <laughs> By touching, by taking my everything, something is there. So he is telling that now 
I also realize this, that what I have told up this, all are like opposite. Radhar darsane mori judaye nayam. Amar darsane radhar sukhe abhi. My eyes are fully satisfied when I look upon Shrimati Radharani. But by looking upon me, she becomes even more advanced in satisfaction. Here telling that if I see gopis and especially Radhika, I become so happy. And Radhika is seeing Krishna and she is becoming also so happy. But if in comparison you will see then you will see that Radhika pleasure is lakhs and lakhs, millions times more than Krishna. Because Krishna is accepting this. So there is something in me that Srimati Radhika she is me and feels so much happiness. So what is in me that thing? That makes Srimati Radhika so what is that? Paraspar benu bite hare chetan. Mor brahme tamalere kare The flute like murmur of the bamboos rubbing against one another stills Radharani's consciousness, for she thinks it to be the sound of my flute, and she embraces a tamal tree, mistaking it for me. They are also telling me that, oh, when I play on float, all are attracted. Even rivers, even deers, Cloud. clouds, everyone is <coughs> attracted. But when I hear the sound of, so sweet sound of Radhika, then I also uh, forget to play on, play on it. So Radhika <laughs> words are so sweet. The songs and dance are so sweet that even I forget to pray on. There are so many <coughs> examples in the Goswami Granth like this. So, <coughs> what is that? <coughs> He's telling <coughs> that something in me that seeing this Srimati Radhika become so much excessive, ecstatic, joyful, that uh, he become, she becomes mad, totally mad. And, uh, more Brahmi Tamayalare Kare Alingan. I never become like such that I embrace Kadambatri. <laughs> But Srimati Radhika, some semblance, semblance what? Oh, that tree is somewhat like black. Green, but not actually green. Semblance. Some blackish. Uh, blackish. And also some crooked, crooked like Krishna. So some resemblance like this. And Srimati Radhika becomes Mad, and he <coughs> embraces that. But one thing just you can mark: Uddhav is like Krishna, so beautiful like Krishna. Same age. Krishna has given his own pitambar garments, everything. All dress and garland. His beauty is also like Krishna, blackish. Then complex. <coughs> Gopis are seeing Uddhava, but they don't embrace. <laughs> but they can embrace the tree. So who is doing it? Frame is such a thing. Then they always shave Gopis. They may be so much mad, but Uddhav they cannot embrace. But trees they can. Even they can embrace their <laughs> black brain <laughs> also. They can uh, chastise. chastise black clouds. <laughs> oh, thinking that is. Yeah. 
कृष्ण आलिंग पाइनु जन्म सफल ए सुखे मग्न रहे वृक्ष करी कोले श्रीमती वादिका thinks I have gotten the embrace of Sri Krishna oh now my life is fulfilled thus she remains immersed in pleasing Krishna taking the tree in her arms अनुकूल बाते जदि पाए मोरा बंधा उड़िया पड़िते चाहे प्रेमे है अन्य when a favorable breeze carries to her the fragrance of my body she is blinded by love and tries to fly into that breeze tambul char pichi char dite jate jabe kare aswadan ananda samudra dube kichhui na jane when she tastes the betel chewed by me she merges in an ocean of joy and forgets everything else but what is what are the reasons <coughs> krishna has no mahabhav no mahana but jashoda um, shrimati radhika has that that shrimati radhika can enjoy all these things and krishna can do chaitanya mahaprabhu one day to be like radhika so he is telling again amar sangame radha pae je anand sat mukhe boli tabu na pai tar anto even with hundreds of mouths i could not express the transcendental pleasure she derives from my association lila ante sukhe ihar angir madhuri taha dekh sukhe ami apana prasad seeing the luster of her complexion after our past times together i forget my own identity in happiness dohar je sab samarash bharat muni jane amar braje ras se hu nahi the sage bharat has said that the mellows of the lover and the beloved are equal but he does not know the mellows of my brindavan that that no idea of transcendental braje lok that he has told that in krishna and beloved beloved and beloved oh some equal love but he does not know anything about this oh anner sangame ami joto pai joto sukh pai taha ai taradha sange sat adhikari the happiness i feel when meeting radharani is a hundred times greater than the happiness i get from meeting others so in conclusion krishna is going conclusion 261 tate jani more ache mote ache kono ek ras amar mohini radha tare kore bas considering this i can understand that some unknown mellow in me controls the entire existence of my captivator shrimati radharani prabodhanand saraswati has compiled this law about this banshi karan nipatita shkalitam shikhandam bhrashtan chapi tabasanam vadya rajasun jascha kataksha sarghat vimuchitasya tang radhika paracharam ikadarshi patitim that when Krishnaval going in cowherd with lakhs and lakhs cows and lakhs and lakhs cowherd was. But there was some who what advance and thoughts because he knew all things. And at that time, Krishna was some behind, taking his cloak in his lips. Shrimati Radhika was standing with so many gopis in a corner behind. When Krishna saw her, at once this float came down from his head, <laughs> and his peacock feathers, <laughs> and he was at once. out of sense and he began to fall down <laughs> at that time madhmangal was there 
He knocked down Krishna. Oh, Father is here. Nanda Baba, Jasoda, and all right. So be careful. So he knocked like so. So here Krishna is himself admitting that I have so much happiness to see Srimati Radhika. But Radhika's happiness is uh, lacks and lacks time more than me. So there is something in me that Radhika becomes a man. What is that? What is that? I don't know. I want to know that what is in me. But I cannot. Because the thing by which one can know is in, not in me. And what is that? Oh, oh. Oh, oh. So I have to borrow from Radhika this more. Then I can know that what is in me. What is like three Madhuri, four Madhuri. What? Ben Madhuri, Rupa Madhuri, Prem Madhuri. Ama Haiti Radha Pai Je Jati Yasu. I am always eager to taste the joy that Radharani derives from me. That I should be mad for that. To sing my root fish, I should be mad. But I cannot be mad. Why? Because Krishna, love and affection is divided in so many fractions. And gopis, love and affection is undivided in four. Krishna, kya hai? Bahunishta. And gopis, love is ekanishta. What is ekanishta? Single point. One point. Like you can understand <coughs> that when Krishna is in Dwarka, when Rukmini was married to Krishna, his love and affection was one pointed and full. But when she got married and came in the Krishna house and he had one child. Pradyumna. Pradyumna. Then his love was divided. Rukmani's love was divided into three. One for Krishna, one for Pradyumna and one for household. Again one son, ten sons, then divided into eleven. And one daughter, then and Krishna, Krishna has so many wives and so many children about from one, one lakh sixty thousand. His love and affection were divided into so many things. So he cannot be happy like this. Never he cannot. Say Sukhmadhurja. Nana Jatna Kariyami Nari Aswadite. Say Sukhmadhurja Ghane Lok Badhe Chitte. Ras Aswadite Ami Kaya Avatar. Prem Ras Aswadiva Vividha Prakar. I'm always eager to taste the joy that Radharani derives from me. In spite of various efforts, I have not been able to taste it. But my desire to relish that pleasure increases as I smell its sweetness. I have appeared in the world to taste mellows. I shall taste the mellows of pure love in various ways. Tahashi Khaiva Lila Acharana Dwara Etin Trishna Mor Rahila Puran Vijati Abhave Nahe Taha Ashwada I shall teach devotional service with springs from Ragamag from the spontaneous love of the devotees by demonstrating it myself with my pastimes. But these three desires have not been satisfied for one cannot enjoy them in a contrary position. Radhikar bhav kanti angi kaapuna eten sup kabhu nahe ashvadam. Unless I accept the luster of the ecstatic love of Sri Radhika, 
these three desires cannot be fulfilled. Radikar bhav, angikar bharitar varna, tin sukha aswadite hava avatirna. Therefore, assuming Radharani's sentiments and bodily complexion, I shall descend to fulfill these three desires. That is why Krishna is has appeared having borrowed the golden beauty of Srimati Radhika and intensive form of Mahabhav. He borrowed from Radhika. And he came in the shape of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Why? To test his three desires especially. And secondly, by Nam Sankirtan, he will give the path of continuous, spontaneous devotion, which had not given for long, since long time. This was the mode of the Sri Krishna. That is why he came. At that time, there was time of Jugavata. And at that time, what was Juga Dharma? To preach name Sankirtan. So he accepted name Sankirtan, but in a special way. And what was that a special way? With, with love and affection, which cannot be given by even by Advaita Acharya or any or Ramachandra. Not by any. Then, Nam, Prem, Mala, Gathi, Paral, Asabare. What is the meaning? Nam, Prem. This is like a thread. And Nam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Hare. These are like pearls, jewels and pearls. But given in string. In a string of love and affection. And then he eh, went in Vrindavan, went in South, everywhere, and he preached this thing, Rag Marga, to all eh, through Nam Shanti. Thus everything was done. But Chaitanya Krishna is thinking. But when I should go descend, this was not certain. In the meantime, Advaita Chakra descended. He came to establish Yuga Dharma, Nam Sankirtan. But he found himself that I am not qualified to give name frame. Then he thought that I should please my Prabhu. How I, I can please him? He read a slok from any Shastra that even some lips of Tulasi with Ganges water, if I can offer to him and I will call, he must come. And that is why he took some lips of Tulasi and then he used to give it to Ganges, water. Ganges water to Krishna and call him Krishna. Come on Krishna, come on Krishna. <laughs> and that is why at that time he descended in the first Sandhya of Kali. First Sandhya means? Of the beginning of this month. It may be that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu <coughs> had come later on. But only by the, by the prayer of Advaita he descended at that time and he prayed in a role of Srimati Radhika that quickly ever whole world. He gave this Rag Marga Bhakti. If Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had not descended and he is associated like Ruth Goswami, Sarup Damodar, Raya Ramanandhar, 
Oh, it was sure that Kalki Bhagwan should have come and cut it all and then suffer you. But in this Kalju, Go Pramad. And one thing is there. It appears by these statements that Mahaprabhu came to taste these three uh, different tastes. That means in his Aprakarda Dham, which is called Abhinna Vrindavan, he is not tasting these rasas. He came no. here, descended here only to taste. In Braja, everything is there. In Gulok Vrinda. No, in the Shwet Dhip, he is testing all these things or no? Huh? In Shwet Dhip, in his Aprakarda Dham, because Mahaprabhu is there in Aprakarda Dham, in his Shwet Dhip. This is Abhin Vrindavan in Shwet Dhip. If he is not testing there and then... They are testing there. But a long time it has been not given to this world. This is the thing. This is their one moment is here equal to lakhs and lakhs Kali Yuga and Satya Yuga and all these things. So there everything is there. But what will be of these worlds? How this Jeev will know all these things and practice and again they will go to so main cause is to give it or to taste it. If we say taste it, this means that he is not tasting there, he is coming here to taste. Here it will be told like this. There is something malice of language. Really, it can be told that he has come to sprinkle the mercy to give the jiva the raga and Because he is so karun. So but he is also Rashik Shekhar. Oh, no, he will come here in this Vrindavan, Prakat Vrindavan, and enjoy everything. Go Maharaj, could I ask a question? Uh, Maharaj, you said that uh, First of all, I, I, I really commend you for holding a class on the Chaitanya Charitamrita <laughs> and discussing these topics among no, devotees because no, they're no. very nectarian and they truly nourish the soul. And I thank you so much for holding this class. Also explain tomorrow about this. I have not explained all the things. Something is behind in this. But I, 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 want have, to explain. Yes. I want to give this thing. What is our real object? That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave us. We should know. And then we should fix our way how we can receive this. If you are ignorant of this thing, whole life, always not hearing all these things. How anyone can know all these things? Only this is true. But this in process, only very rare person will come. They may be here, but a greed will come to very rare person. Parchetana Mahaprabhu has come, descended to give these things, so why uh, we should be denying, not disclosing. So we should hear because we are one of the rare devotees <laughs> in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes, Bharat. Now, on, on this very issue, there is tremendous interest right now in the Western world about the feminine side of God, about the uh, the, the, the goddess, the feminine side of God. And unfortunately, as you have said, Vaishnavas have this reluctance to share about Radharani, which I find silly, to tell you the truth. Because we say we must protect Radharani, but Radharani is protecting us. We I don't feel she needs protection, she's protecting us. You are us. going to protect, you will hear. But, no, my question is, that uh, 
but devotees ought to share about Radharani. There's a tremendous interest today about the feminine side of God. However, there was one major obstacle to people accepting Vaishnavism about Radharani. And that is that these same scriptures that so eloquently explain the feminine side of God better than any scripture in the world, these very same scriptures also say that women are less intelligent. And, and, this, and this statement closes the mind of people to hear about Vaishnavism. How can this contradiction be resolved? Yes, yes. that is why I told the definition of Uttama Bhakti. But there is no worldly desire at all. No conception of sterling and pulling. Male and female at all. For them this is. It is not for all persons. So first we will have to give up all these things. But we should know something about it. But when we will give up all kinds of Huh? Duality is male, female, everything, and their lust and everything. Only all the activities will be for to please only to Krishna. <coughs> then, so we should come in this platform, and we should try to know everything on being on that platform where there is no worldly desire at all. Even there is no wish of salvation or mukti even. Even they have passed away to serve Narayan and Dwarkadhis even, Ram even. So high class of platform. <coughs> so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to be this rare thing but if you are not discussing something, then it will be vanished from when? Yes, from the soul. So it is not far off. But I know one thing that we should consider that there is a uh, what iron and magnet. 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 Magnet cannot attract wood, whether it is pure or He It cannot attract gold, silver, diamond, water, or anything else. Only pure iron that you can attract. So, in bhakti called also like this. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to this world. He liked that magnet. magnet. Hmm? So those who are in idea to serve like Narayan, those who have so many worldly desires like Bhu and others, they will go to Ramanuj, they will go to Madhvachar, they will go to smart Brahmins, they will go to other places. They will come to Christianity. They will go to Bhagavad They cannot come to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we are not here anyhow. We are so much fortunate that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has attracted. So we have some special mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. By constitution, we have something of that love. Otherwise, we have not. Eh? Attracted to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his life. I know that in this world, whole world, how many, how much, how is the population? Six billion. Six. And uh, how many we here? We? <laughs> how how many we here? And in 162, <laughs> only very few are who will understand this. I think very rare. So this is very rare. So we are 
Anyhow, we're so fortunate. We'll have a chance to be in this high class of love and of things. We are so much fortunate that we have come in the line of Rupa Goswami. We are attracted sometimes. <coughs> so we are more fortunate than others. Go Praman. <laughs> We are fortunate that you came here to try. <laughs> also, he has dragged me. Give her some card talk.
I'm feeling so fortunate to have Srila Gurudev and all of you here. I feel like I feel like it is the moon surrounded by so many stars have come to my house. No one can estimate the fortune of having great personalities like this come to your place. Yes. I'm uh, I'm feeling so fortunate. Actually, uh, I want to say to Gurudev that I am yours, my house is yours, my family is yours, even my dog is yours. <laughs> <laughs> and anything I can do for anybody. Why you left your dog? Because <laughs> you, she is. She is also mine. She is yours. <laughs> Actually, in the scriptures it says that when pure devotees pray for something, they always pray for the association of pure devotees in Sadhu Sangha. And here we are having this wonderful opportunity. I'm feeling immeasurable uh, fortune. There's no, there's no words that can describe this. Uh, by Guru's mercy, one can get out of this material world. There's never been a case where someone leaves the material world without getting the mercy of the pure devotee. Without Sadhu Sangha, no one leaves this place. So, this is a special opportunity for all of us to engage in Harikata for the next eight or nine days. And I hope we can all take full advantage of it. And uh, this festival will be uh, remembered for a long time. Hopefully many more festivals like this will take place. So I offer my humble obeisances to all of you and hope you will bless me. And thank you very much. So once again, we're so very, very fortunate to have the presence of His Divine Grace, Sri Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Maharaj. I think that everything is pointed here towards Nubraj. 
this whole tour, everyone's saying, are you coming to New Braj? So much will be there. So I think that we're all very lucky to be here in New Braj with all so many nice Vaishnavas, uh, such wonderful hosts as Nirguna Nilachala Prabhu's, and all of the uh, wonderful entourage that is traveling worldwide with Srila Gurudev. This is Srila Gurudev's fourth visit to New Braj. I think one more than Merwillamba. <laughs> I was remembering something very uh, interesting that happened the first time that Srila Gurudev came here, and I wish Gopravindapal was here, I wanted him to hear this. There were some of us here that had had some influence, and there was actually some debate and discussion amongst our community members, and we were wondering, oh, should we allow him to speak? He's coming, it's too late, but now what can we do? So we had one meeting, and it was about 50-50. And Gopravindapal was there, Pradabja Prabhu, and, and some others who were speaking so nicely and favorably of Srila Gurudev. Um, we all became convinced that the best thing to do is that we should allow him to speak. Why not? And then if there was some problem, we could, we could take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the funny part. Uh, as an afterthought, Gopa, you know, in pacifying, he said, Worst case scenario, two, three days, he'll be gone, and everything will be just as it was. Two, three days, he will stay here, and after that, everything will go on like it was before. <laughs> so, again, we're so fortunate uh, to have this, and I think... Um, Myself, I've always prayed. I, I just miss Srila Prabhupada by... About our journey to some Hawaii... Hawaii. Oh! Los Angeles, Hawaii. Los Angeles, Hawaii. I was fortunate to be there. Srila Gurudev went again, and, and we can see how every year where he goes, things increase so much. In Hawaii last year, we had, you know, some hippies. <laughs> and Gurudev made them into happies. And they were so happy that this year, Almost triple. We had many nights of 150 or more devotees, and many senior devotees, uh, disciples of Srila Swami Maharaj uh, Prabhupada, and many new people. So we can see that everywhere it is increasing. Devotees hear this sweet Hari Kata, and they feel attracted to come again and again. And now some devotees, I believe, may be coming from Hawaii. They, they, they can't resist to follow along. Then we went over to, from Maui, we went to Honolulu and across to the North Shore where a very wonderful devotee, Vrindavan Prabhu, uh, he has a Govinda's juice. And everybody was so happy, he was giving us all juice. <laughs> so much fresh juice, he's making thousands of gallons. And one day Gurudev said, oh, you're spoiling all my brahmacharis. <laughs> what will we do when we go back to Mathura? How will I supply them with this juice? <laughs> Gurudev called his place Vrindavandam. It's like here he calls it Nirgundam. <laughs> and here we go down by uh, Gurudev's mercy is there. And we'll be all so happy to take care of you and helping here as much as we can. Uh, we'll have a nice Anakut Mahotsava next door for the honor of Giriraj. And I think I've had my two words. I'd like to say more, but another time. Thank you all again so much for coming, and I, I pray for all your mercy to make me a good, strong devotee. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Um,
now I am singing that song. One coming from Malaysia, some Singapore, so here and there. It was a very important place for history, for children. So, so many thanks to you both. Go on. Before I begin, I have to respond. It reminds me when Shil Prabhupada used to serve out the feast, cook it, and take care of all the devotees, and then he would say, thank you very much. Shri <laughs> Guru was saving us by engaging us in his service, and he was thanking us. Om Adhyana Tamaram Bhisvaya, Ganyam Jinnara Shilakaya, Chakshiran Meditana Nina, Taitana Shri Guru Mahamadhi. Vanchakalpa Tamaram Chao, Kripasana Vedeva Chao, Patitanam Bhavanam Vedeva I'm remembering something that Srila Prabhupada wrote in 1935 when he addressed the Kodi Amat devotees and he said, Had he not appeared before us, perhaps we would have remained for lifetimes and even ages in the darkness of helpless captivity. Had he not appeared before us, we would never have understood the significance of the first shloka of the Bhama Samhita. Ishvara Parama Krishna Satschidananda Anadi Radhya Govinda Sarvakarana Karana. Krishna, who is known as Govinda, is the Supreme Godhead. He has an eternal, blissful spiritual body. He is the origin of all, he has no other origin, and he is the prime cause of all causes. In a, a book I read once by Srila Siddhamaraj, he says that when Krishna plays his flute in, flute in Vrindavan, all the devotees are called to their respective service because the flute playing is imbued with so much love and the hearts of the devotees are attracted to respond according to their particular nature. So, analogous to that, Srila Gurudev is traveling all over the world now. Uh, and it's the holy sound that's coming from his divine lips is attracting all of us to that place where we belong, where we've forgotten. And so, how can we how can we understand how inconceivably fortunate we are on this occasion that such a personality has appeared in the purview of our eyes, who exists in that realm? On a morning walk last year, Gurudev was speaking, I was fortunate enough to be there, and as he was walking along, he suddenly said, uh, this pond over here and this pond over there, this, this is Shamakund and this is Radhakund, before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had them excavated. And he looked over at a hill in the distance and he said, And that is Govardhan and Sridham and Subal. They are running and Krishna is saying, Come on, come on, and ready to fight with them. And then he saw a tree and he told us, The trees are great devotees who are, who are observing the pastimes of Radha and Krishna and are uh, offering their service by bending down and offering their leaves. And then a few minutes went by and then he stopped and he, again he said, do not think that this remembrance of Vrindavan is imagination. He said, actually, I am always in Vrindavan. And gradually, by hearing, impressions will enter into the heart and then go deeper and deeper. And then one day, your real Atma will come out. So he said, just like a businessman, he plans his activities and he conceives of where he wants to be. So this remembrance of Vrindavan is like that. And then he said, and those who stay with me will get this. Over the year, I've had time to reflect that staying with Gurudev is not a light thing. It's not some external thing. It's an affair of the heart. I've been fortunate enough to be around devotees like Gopanandini and Prankishore and Nikuna, who have made progress in giving their heart to Gurudev and inspired me so much in my service. But in my own particular case, having been so long accustomed to karma and gyan, I'm still fearful of dying to live, so I have a boon to ask a sure Gurudev, and I hope it's appropriate for everyone here, that this inconceivably fortunate occasion be one where we get your blessings so that the Harikata that you speak, which is imbued with so much love and affection, can penetrate past our mental and sensual bodies to the core of our heart, where we can respond to it appropriately. That the only mood we have in approaching you now, and when you're traveling all over the world in the Torah, is one of service and surrender. Prabhupada once said, do not try to enjoy your spiritual master, just serve him. So I beg for that benediction from you. 
And that I always be mindful of what you, and you now you help us to understand in a deeper way what Srila Prabhupada have come to you. You come from that realm where Shishiva and Krishna are the center of everyone's attention. And, and that, as Raghunath Das Goswami says in the prayer, Namashrishta Manumati Sachi Purcha Matras Rupam, Rupam Tasya Gajama Rupareen, Matarim Gostarakim, Radha Kundam Giribaram Maho Radhika Madhapasam, Rapta Yasya Patita Kripaya Shigadam Tamitrasam. That somehow or other by your causeless mercy, a drop of greed will enter into my heart and purify all my tendencies for karma and gain so that I can properly appreciate the gift that you ensure the Father come to bring. Don't you count the thing of this child creep us in? qualified to speak in such a wonderful assembly. And we are so grateful that you're here and all the bodies with you. It's been a very long, cold year. Um, time has not been kind to us. And it's been very, very long in separation. I'm learning more and more that um, our badger, our new Braj, is not just the few families who live here, but all these devotees here that come with you when you're here and we're all here to only hear from you. Um, we've been very fortunate to read your lectures on the internet this year and um, seeing your world tours and your world curriculum and um, it's as if you're conquering the entire world and you're doing it heart by heart and it's incredible to watch and to read your lectures and we, um, we got to hear what you spoke in Australia um, Vishubhan and on to me classes and, um, Lord Chaitanya, um, God and Chikcha Guru, and so much in Miami and everywhere. Um, it's um, every morning we wake up and we go turn on our computers and <laughs> we hear <laughs> how much you're speaking. When Shiva Prabhupada was here, we used to uh, wake up in our respective temples and any little small place in the world, and we would we would ask three questions: What, where is he? Where is he going? And what book is he working on? Because we never knew where he was going to go, and, um, and now we wake up in the morning, and we, we, we know where you are, and we know where you're going, because there's such a nice schedule. Um, but all we want to know is what, what you're speaking, and what, what heart, sweet heart guitar you're giving. So um, so now we have you here for, um, you're going to peruse this eight or nine days? We thought it was ten. <laughs> 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 okay, ten days. It's ten days, and um, <laughs> what? Nine? Only nine? And ten days. Oh, nine and a half. <laughs> nine and a half. All right. I'll have to think about that for a while. Um, and we are praying that this time, time will be kind to us and stretch out um, this time, so that this ten days, nine and a half days, will be. Um, thousands of years and we will be able to hear very, very, very carefully all of your instructions and all of your words and see every glance and um, and that we will know that that um, we'll ne we're never ever ever separated from our group. Always ready, presented for who and she, especially she. She wanted to go to Vrindavan and to be in Seva Kunja, always serving, chanting, and remember Radha and Krishna. But I stopped them not to go. <laughs> So they are so much sacrificed that to obey my order, 
get out of here and ditch him for his and drugs. So much sacrifice. I know that Krishna will give so much huh? a reward for this. Oh, certainly. That is what you do. So don't think that you are deprived of all the devil. Very own. In this life, also in transcendental life, he may charm you. So he requests Radha Krishna that go on serving like that all the disciples were. So much inspired such Swamiji. Even to go in hell, no harm. So I am seeing that same inspiration is coming in devotees now. Everywhere in the world I go, I saw this in I want that, oh, my Bharat Prabhu should come and speak to us.